Welcome back to the shop. So I figured I'm going to make a video this time around uh, about making a set of parallels for myself. And uh, I want to go through the process of this. But one of the things that I've actually been kind of thinking about is I've been using, I have a young baby at home. And I've been using, I've been buying baby wipes by the ton load. Right. And I noticed that they're, they're pretty darn good at taking off grease. And they don't really leave anything behind. I don't know. It doesn't feel like they're leaving anything behind. And as I said, pretty darn good at taking on grease. This is me just futzing around the shop. And this is the crap I accumulate in my hands. So, I think that I have a surface plate here. And I can always go back and clean this thing up with ammonia. The problem is, some schmutz seems to <laughs> always accumulate on this darn plate. And I've... I've cleaned it out with ammonia before, but I, I'm not particularly fond of the smell. So, I have taken to cleaning out my surface plate with baby wipes. And it uh, doesn't seem to harm it, so I don't know. This is... This surface plate is actually... It's a nice plate in my shop anyway, and this is the crap that's coming off of it. And I have a feeling that the surface plate wipes are nothing more than this. And I buy these things by the ton load anyway, so a package only cost me a couple of dollars. And it goes a long way in cleaning something like this. Oh, well, let's see how well this does. Uh, instead of letting it dry like that, I'm just going to come back with a piece of paper and dry it out. Like I said, I can't really see much of a difference. So, with all of that said, you guys may recognize this piece of steel from such hits as my shaper handle. I'll put a link in the description. And a uh, small layout square, which actually this needs a wipe down too. I've been using these to degrease things too. And uh, a small machinist square. My Randy Richard scribe that I've been trying to showcase in my videos and it always ends up being cut out. Randy, I absolutely love this thing. Oh, and let's open it up. My junk calipers. And if needs be, my Jensen square. Well, scale, not square. My Jensen scale. So, since we're going through all of this, I basically want four inch, two four inch pieces out of this, if I can get them. Problem is, if I go directly at the line, Actually, that's not too bad. So we get to mark the first one and lay out the second one just to get any sort of hope that this is going to be at least comparatively square. At the end of the day, these are actually getting bandsawed. I'm not milling them. But it's nice having layout lines. So, Randy, thank you. I'll link to Randy's channel in the description as well. With all that said, 
Off to the bandsaw. Some of you may have noticed this is a different wheel than what I used to grind in the chuck. This is more adapt to what I need to do here, so I may actually go in and regrind the chuck. But uh, the main thing that I wanted to show you guys is this is uh, my diamond and its holder. And I got rid of the big set screw and I put a small one in there. And uh, this allows me to use the set screw against the backstop like so to throw up the wheel. It also allows me to use the diamond in this position if I want to radius the back of it or I should say clearance the back of the wheel a bit and uh, well that's it so that's the idea of this design and also the angle actually allows you to change the angle of the diamond in relationship to the wheel so you don't have to actually keep rotating this if you're if, if you start um, throwing up your wheel at this angle then you push it up a little bit 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 as long as it's in the back axis of rotation this shouldn't jam and it's actually pointing out the other way so if it does catch it'll just push it out which uh, is not a problem so with that said let's throw up this wheel sides have been ground in except for the front and the back the lower portion has been ground in so I gotta grind these parallel as well and uh, yes uh, surface grinder does take quite a bit of material if you use the right wheel and uh, settings so So this is the final result and uh, these are my parallels, these are my import grade um, 1 to 3 blocks, this is my diamond dressing wheel, my machinist square and my tense indicator. Well, the fact of the matter is that I've been trying to compare things and this is over here over the longer portion so I guess this is about two and a half inches maybe and uh, this chunk over here that's within a thou well one ten thousandths at least as far as my indicator is telling me and my um, 
my metrology full is not that well evolved yet so I'm trying to keep things as clean as possible but yeah uh, so we'll leave this to the side because that's probably the most accurate thing I own and because that's actually no let's see how I did with my own parts here and uh, let's see That's four tenths over three and a half inches. The best of my blocks is about four ten thousandths over three and a half inches. I'm not claiming this is a high end metrology set. So I wonder what the uh, this part The machine is capable of holding tents hmm. so again this is a chunk of scrap metal that got turned into parallels for my shaper I think these may actually be as accurate if not more accurate than the jaws of the vice so I mean really what am I expecting here and most likely this will be used as packing for the surface grinder anyway so with that said I think <laughs> I think I'm done so like and subscribe underneath and you know, tell me what you think bye